Hey, what's going on guys? Tim here again. Got another knife review for you today. Going back to my roots. So, doing a knife review on the Lucas Burnley Kihon. That's the mid-tech here. This is not the Boker version. Um, a Boker kind of production version of this knife came out just recently. But this is the mid-tech semi-custom version. Here it is here. So I want to do a review on this knife because um, there's only like two videos on YouTube of uh, this knife. And I feel like this knife deserves a lot more screen time because this, in my opinion, is one of the best mid techs out there. And I felt like it kind of flew under the radar a little bit. Or maybe I'm just, you know, didn't hear of any real hype about this knife. So what are we looking at? A titanium frame lock flipper designed by Lucas Burnley of uh, Lucas Burnley Knives. Uh, if you're familiar with him, or if you're not familiar with him, he's done so many collaborations with CRKT, one of which you can see here in the uh, CRKT Baki. So this is the uh, fixed blade version of his uh, Quiken knife. He also has um, several versions of this knife, um, or sorry, production versions of this knife with Boker through the uh, Boker Quiken, which is an awesome knife. He used to have that one, but I sold it off, but I kind of wish I had it again. So there it is there, if you're familiar with uh, this production knife, you can kind of compare the size. So why is this knife so great? Well, um, it is a mid-tech knife. So I believe um, the parts, sort of the, uh, I guess the water jet parts um, were cut out and outsourced, but all the um, finishing touches, basically assembly, finishing the parts, doing the anodization, um, tumbling the blade, you know, every, all those little details are done in-house. And I think just the blanks were sent to Lucas for, um, you know, final production or final assembly, which is what makes it a mid-tech. But everything about this knife is very, very well done. It's very well made, put together, and um, overall the quality is excellent. So let's start with the blade. Uh, blade shape is very nice. I like it. It's uh, kind of similar to that Quiken blade shape, but kind of shortened and kind of shrunken down. It's also the blade height is a little bit higher. But for EDC uh, purposes, it works great. Let me give you a closer look at that beautiful stone wash on the knife. So it's got a rather aggressive stone wash, but it does have this nice polish to it. And I believe that's achieved with um, tumbling with ceramic rods. I could be mistaken though, but anyways, uh, really nice blade shape and finish on that looks great. Uh, very useful blade shape, of course. It's got a nice point for piercing if you ever need to, you know, cut open a bag of sand or something or a bag of chips, whatever, right? Um, and also good amount of decent belly here and plenty of cutting edge down here. So for my purposes and general use, it works great. Blade thickness is, um, it's not too bad. It's not paper thin behind the edge, um, but it is... It's not super thick either, so you've got some stability there, and it'll work great. It would be better. It would have be, It would be a better slicer if it was a little bit thinner, but I'm not complaining. It works fine for me. All right. So uh, steel we're looking at is 154 cm. I don't have the most experience with it, but um, EDC steel for me, you know, as long as I can keep it sharp and it's not too difficult to sharpen, and the edge lasts, you know, decently, it's good enough for me. Now, moving down to the pivot and deployment, as I've shown you, it is a flipper. I've got the flipper tab right there. Give you a quick look there. You can also see that little milling there that's done. So when you flip the knife, your finger kind of has that little pocket to go into, but uh, really nice. Action is great. Also, uh, this uses these two thumb studs here. We're actually, they're actually blade stops, but you can also use them as uh, thumb studs. So let me show you here. If you just put a bit of pressure right here, pops open just like that. You can even kind of push on the opposite side like that. Super fun. So yeah, a few methods of deployment, which is nice. And one thing I love so much about this knife, as you can see here, is the detent. The detent is so well balanced in that it's not insanely difficult to pop the knife open. Um, like there is enough detent, positive detent to build enough, build up a bit of pressure, pop the blade open, 
but also it's not like finger breaking. It's not super hard. And um, because of that, you can even open the knife slowly like that, which is awesome. And you can also use the blade stops as a deployment method because the detent, it's not too hard, but it's not too soft, which is awesome. I think you really achieve something special with that. Okay. There is his uh, maker's mark. Looks a little different from his customs, of course, because this is not a full custom. It's a mid tech. But other than that maker's mark, that's it. There's no other real markings on the knife. So moving down to the handle, we've got the uh, titanium slabs here. They've got a really lovely kind of bronzed finish here and stone washed. Okay, it looks great. And the oils from your hand will, you know, affect the color and, um, you know, cause some nice random little spots of purple and blue every now and then, depending on, you know, how much you handle the knife, which is great. Ergonomics are fine. I mean, it's basically a stick when you look at it, right? It's just a flat bar, but it works very well in your hand. And I don't have any real hot spots when I'm holding the knife in the kind of natural or hammer grip, kind of like sort of the natural grip. It's, uh, it's quite thick too in terms of the width of this knife so it does fill out your hand quite well right and of course because of that flipper tab you have a nice guard there you don't really need the jimping or anything like that because um you can really lock in with a grip like this so that i really like got some few little minor milling details here like that there right there and the cutout here so you can kind of get better you know get better purchase on the thumb stud a little bit but that all adds to the overall look of the knife, which I really like. It's got uh, one, two, three points of contact here. So two screws at the back here, one for the pivot. I believe the Boker version only has one, one on the back here. So it only has two. Interesting how they were able to do that. So looking at the hardware, let's get a closer look. It's um, titanium hardware, the screws and the pivot. And the over travel stop, they've been blasted and even kind of given a light stone wash, which is really nice. The clip as well matches the hardware. Also titanium, given that sort of subtle stone wash. So everything matches very nicely, right? So uh, yeah, of course, and it does have the hinderer lock bar stabilizer. It is a stabilizer because it does control the over travel as well as any vertical movement, as you can see. Right. Lock up, super solid, rock solid. I have taken this knife apart to oil it because when it got to me, um, came to me new out of box, the, the action was a little stiff. So I did have to uh, remove the kind of factory grease that was in there and I kind of just put some nano oil in there and now it flips like a dream. Haven't had to do much maintenance on it either. I've been carrying it for quite a while and uh, yeah, it still flips great. Here you've got the uh, little bit of milling there for the lock bar relief, which is nice. Got that three kind of milling channels there, which is cool. And uh, yeah, overall, excellent, excellent knife. Definitely one of my most favorite mid techs, if not the favorite mid tech out there. And I've handled quite a lot of mid techs. You know, I've handled um, you know the Brad Southern ones, the uh, Michael Birch ones. David Moser. David Moser made a great mid tech too, and I really want to get that crossfire back. <laughs> anyway, let's give it a quick size comparison. There it is next to, we'll just put it next to the paramilitary two, which we all know and love. Let's try to put them end to end or butt to butt. So just about just a hair over the paramilitary or sorry, hair under is what I mean. But uh, overall still a very manageable EDC knife. And I absolutely love it. Oh, of course, it does have the uh, little lanyard hole here as well. Oh, and this is what the um, standoffs look like. Kind of like dumbbell standoffs, but they got a lot of little milling channels in there, which is really cool. So um, if you can get this knife, I suggest you just get, go for it. If you can afford it and, uh, you know, the opportunity does arise, just get it. It's a great knife. That's how much I'm going to recommend it. Uh, from what I understand, Luke does do small batch of the batches of these knives for uh, knife shows sometimes and I think he does small batches just for random drops on his uh, website so check out his website as well I will link that down below in the description of course 
if you can't you know afford this mid-tech version and um, you know you don't really want to hunt for one you can get the uh, boker kihon which from what i've heard is a very very good knife i haven't handled one yet i'm very curious to uh check one out but at the same time i don't really see any point in getting that one if i have this one but um i've heard very good things about that one it's great quality and also it's even lighter than this one because the boker version um see if you see inside the knife here there is no um, internal milling but they did some internal milling um, on the inside of the slabs for the boker version and um that's pretty cool right so uh that is it for me i just wanted to quickly share this one with you guys um i know some of you still enjoy my random knife reviews here or there so we'll still keep making them uh, here and there but don't worry of course if you're here for the paracord plenty more paracord videos to come of course got so many ideas and uh, tutorials in the works so yeah that's it guys thank you so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you on the next video